When it comes to unlocking things in the physical world, we're used to relying on keys. But when it comes to unlocking accounts in the digital world, we rely mainly on username and passwords. However, there is a different approach where we can use a physical key to give us access to our online accounts. Hello there, my name's Gary Sims, and this is Gary Explains. If you wanna find out more about how these USB security keys work, please let me explain. Okay, before I go on, I just want to mention, if you like the t-shirt, let me explain. They're available to buy online and there'll be a link in the description below. Now, we're all used to accessing our online accounts using username and passwords. And you might think that's fairly secure because the password is stored up here and only you know about it. Of course, there are two additional problems. One is that the service that you're using has a copy of your password. Now, hopefully it's in some kind of hash format, so it's not just stored plainly as your password. But if hackers manage to steal the database of all the username and passwords, then with some processing, they can get access to your password. And I have a whole video Video on this channel about how they, they crack those passwords and how you can experiment cracking passwords as well. Of course, the other thing that happens is phishing, and that is where you are tricked into going to a site, you think it's your Gmail account or your Dropbox account or your Facebook account, the site looks very similar, and you type in your username and password, and in fact, it's a fake shop, it's a fake uh, frontage that they've put on there, and then what happens is you've revealed your username and password to the hackers. Now, the best way to get around these problems with the username and password is to use two-step authentication. That means you need two things to be able to log in. The first thing is your username and password combination, but the second thing is some kind of code. Now, this second step is achieved in many, many different ways. Maybe you've seen it maybe with something like your online banking, you might get an SMS message, which gives you a code, which you then type in, so they know that you have got the phone at least, and that they and you are the owner of that phone and you can type in that code the problem is that sms messages can actually be intercepted it does require a sophisticated uh, level of uh, hacking but it can be uh, intercepted and the hackers can get access to your account that way a second way might be using something like google's authenticator and this is a really good system it's on your phone you say i'm going to access your gmail account it comes up with a unique code that changes every 30 seconds or so, you type in that code and the, the, the codes that are coming up on your phone and what's expected so are synchronized so that it knows that you've got a current code that appeared within the last 30 seconds. Now the problem with that system is that if you are under a sophisticated phishing attack, what can happen is the hacker can redirect you to a site, you type in your username and password, they then type in your username and password on uh, the real uh, website, then they say, oh, I need a code. So they put up a page for you to say, please give me the code. You look at your phone, you type in the code, they receive that code, and then they type it in in the background, and now they've got access to your account. Again, now again, these are advanced, sophisticated phishing attacks, but they do happen. So the best way to protect against these sophisticated phishing attacks is to use a physical USB security key. And the big difference between this key and what you would get, let's say, with the Google Authenticator is that there's no moment where you have to type in a code and therefore a hacker could be tricking you to type in the code at the wrong moment. This key can talk directly to the authentication service and therefore it can't be tricked into thinking that you need to type in this code now. Now, Google were recently in the news because they've issued all of their employees with these types of security keys, and they say that since they've been using them, none of their employees have been susceptible to phishing attacks. And they also announced they're going to be shipping their own type of key called uh, Titan, which you'll be able to buy from the Google Play Store. And when that comes out, I will buy one and I will do a separate video. However, it's expected to work very much the same as the existing USB keys. Now, Google have a, a pro program called Advanced Protection, which allows you to to secure your Gmail account using the security keys. So the first step is you need to buy two of these USB security keys. Now, why do you need two? Very simply because you need to have a backup. Now, one key should work with wireless, so Bluetooth and NFC, so that you can very easily enter into your accounts on a smartphone without having to try to plug in a USB cable with some kind of dongle or that. It just does it over the wireless protocols, Bluetooth or NFC. And a second key, which will be your backup. Now, you have a backup because if you carry this key around with you, on your key ring and that's absolutely fine for when you need to access an account if you lose it you still have access to this key which you have somewhere at home or in a safe or even on a different place 
where you can actually get access to it and then you can use it to access your accounts, revoke this key and revoke access to all the accounts that could have been compromised. Now it's just worth mentioning these keys are not that expensive. You get them for about 20 or $25 in the US. I paid 20 and 25 euros here in Europe. And when Google launches its Titan security key, it's expected to be priced in the same kind of range. Now with Google's advanced protection program, you buy the two keys and then you go to their website and you register the two keys and then you turn on the advanced uh, protection system. So let's just go quickly through those steps. Okay, so as you can see here, I've already registered one key and to go and register the second key, you, add, you click add security key. It then says that you need to have the security key ready, you need to insert it. And once you have inserted it, you then need to press the little button and you may find that you get a little message up by, uh, from Google Chrome saying that it wants to read that key. And of course, this is a mechanism that works through Google Chrome. Once you allow that, the key will then be registered. Now, once you uh, turn on advanced protection, there are a few things you need to know. One is you can only sign in if you have the physical key with you. If you don't have it with you, if you've left it at home, if you've lost it, you cannot get access, which is why it's important that you have both of those keys and they're stored separately and one is stored in a safe place. The other thing worth mentioning is if you do lose both keys, you can recover your account from Google. However, Google say this is a several day process before they'll be able to give you back access to your account. Now, once you activate advanced protection, you'll be signed out across all your accounts, including on your smartphones and your laptops and your desktops. And Google will ask you to sign in again on each device using the security key. Now, what I'm going to do is show you how you do that on a laptop and how you do that on a smartphone. Now, the key to remember here is that once you do it the first time, you can actually say this device should be trusted, which means you don't need to do it every single time. But somebody else on a third computer trying to access your account will not be able to access it unless they actually physically have access to that security key and your username and your password. Okay, so here I am on my laptop. I've been signed out of every device, including this laptop, when I set up advanced protection. Now I'm going to type in my username and password and then we'll go through to the authentication. So let's do that now. Okay, at this point, we now need to use our second factor authentication. Here I have a, the USB key that I bought. I'm just gonna pop it into the a USB uh, port here on the laptop. And it asks me to press the button, which I'm gonna do. And now the second step verification process starts and that's it, I'm all signed in. But I could only do it if I had this key. Now I can remove this key, I don't need it anymore. And also, of course, uh, I've ticked that box there so that uh, it trusts this computer uh, further on. Okay, so here I am on an Android device. I need to sign in. So I type in my username and password, which of course I'm not going to show you. And now that I've done that, even if you did have my username and password, I now have a second step to verify it and I need the actual physical key. And here it's been showing you this animation that you need to take the key and put it on the back of the phone because this key here supports Bluetooth and NFC and of course USB. So I'm gonna take it now and put it on the back of the phone. Okay, it's read the key. It's now checking my login. And that's it, I'm logged in. My name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video on USB security keys. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, please do tell your friends about this video. First of all, because online security is very, very important as we trust more and more data to these online services. And secondly, of course, we want to build up the community here at Gary Explains. I'd also like to hear from you in the comments below to tell me your experiences of using USB security keys. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.